Hey everyone, one thing I haven't explored much over the years is the maps of DBD. Today I thought we'd look at the maps and discuss the story behind each of them, their significance in the realm, and why they appear as they do. The Macmillan Estate has a number of different landmarks across its maps. The primary story behind the estate is that of the Trapper or Evan Macmillan. The estate is a place he inherited from his father, with its prime functions being coal mining and ironworks. The estate falls apart after Evan murders his workers by trapping them in the mines, which is the significance of Suffocation Pit. On the map we can see the sealed mines, with the tunnels no longer being accessible. The other land Landmarks in the realm also suggest that Evan did a little more work after this. Coal Tower is roofless, suggested to be the result of a large explosion, likely caused by Evan. The Ironworks makes reference to murders also, with people said to be dropped into the large cauldrons where bodies had been incinerated. Groaning Storehouse is quite likely the location of where Evan trapped and left his father to die after smashing his legs. Each of these places, therefore, are locations across the vast estate where workers died at the hands of both Evan and his father throughout the years. Shelter Woods is a little more unique now that Skull Merchant has arrived. The woods themselves are the woods Evan and his father walk through in their tome law, and where they would hunt. It's also the location where Evan's father quite likely killed both his brother, Evan's uncle, and his wife, Evan's mother. The new structure erected by Merchant is a command base that she brings around with her, able to set up on the go. It has a tracking area, a living space, and a number of practice or testing areas, like with the mannequins. Autohaven Wreckers is a place where Wraith or Philip Ajoma worked, and possibly Ghostface or Jed Olsen, if you interpret a small map detail to hint to this. Autohaven has a number of locations, but the primary and most important thing about these maps is kind of the recurring crushed car wall structures, most predominant in Wreckers Yard. These structures have body parts twisted into them. You can see legs legs, arms, torsos, lots of gross stuff contorted into the metal. These were the victims of Philip, who crushed cars for his boss, Azarov. He wasn't aware of the people inside, and was an unknowing accomplice to these atrocities. Gas Heaven is said to be the last gas station available before a long stretch of travel, and people would often go missing when stopping here, with the phone lines being cut. This is interesting, as it suggests Azarov didn't just run a service to disappear certain people. It appears he almost did it recreationally, and preyed on innocent travellers too as they passed. Wretched Shop appears to be a similar deal. In both instances, Auto Haven was a functioning place place to repair cars, it's just they also had this darker side business too, that Azarov and seemingly a number of other employees were in on. The location of Azarov's resting place appears to be the area where Philip eventually put an end to Azarov, although his body is not visible anywhere on the map, and in the Crusher, where he is said to have died. The office location is where Azarov made deals and accepted money to disappear people. The safe in the floor is said to be where this was hidden, and also filled with money suggesting again he didn't really need to do this, and often did it to innocent people for his own pleasure. Blood Lodge is Azarov's home, stated to have weird carvings and etchings in the wall, with a basement said to hold people prisoner. Azarov was a really twisted guy. Coldwind Farm was a farm owned by the Thompsons, Max and Evelyn, and their son Boy, who we know as Billy. It's a place said to have an ominous presence, even before Billy's massacre. Billy was hidden away as a child nearby the fractured cowshed, kept in a small dark room, his parents embarrassed by his disfigurement. Torment Creek and its fallen silo are kind of mysterious in why they're important. The silo is said to have fallen during 2003, and have contained 12 bodies within the stored slurry. This may be the location where Billy hid his parents and the chief and deputy police officers he killed during his rampage. It's notable too, as this is a whole 31 years after Billy's massacre, said to be in 1972. The rancid abattoir is the location where Billy was forced by his father to slaughter animals from a young age, as a result of his abnormal strength. The chief and other police would also watch him do this, which was something he hated. The Thompson house is where Max and Evelyn lived, and later Billy after he got rid of both of them. As a result, it's now fairly wrecked. 
rotten fields are simply cornfields, with some features like Cowtree being evidence of Billy's massacre, not only being to humans, but also the farm animals, which he hung up in multiple different displays, in the trees, on the exit gates, within the Thompson house, many different ways. Crota's Pren Asylum is likely a fairly large place, However, we only see a portion of it. Disturbed Ward is the location where Sally or Nurse worked for two decades within the asylum. The structure itself has a few rooms and an upstairs treatment theatre kind of thing, where it seems different medical procedures were likely taken out. Due to the appearance of bone sores on the upper floors, this is likely where Nurse got her signature weapon. Father Campbell's Chapel is a chapel located close by to Crotus Pren, and is where Sally and the patients of Crotus Pren would go as a place of refuge to pray and express themselves to Father Campbell. Campbell being stated to have been a good man, but during Nurse's rampage was murdered within the confessional, possibly after Sally had confessed to what she'd done, or perhaps he was hiding in there. The addition of the clown's caravan is something the entity has done to give clown a place to stay. It does say that this is a temporary setup and the circus does move throughout the fog, which we haven't actually seen yet, We've only seen it at Father Campbell's. Maurice is there of course too, the clown's horse, taken into the realm, but burned in the process, which blinded him. He now has a third eye to make up for it, given as a gift from the entity. Haddonfield is of course the location of the Myers household, and the two massacres of Michael Myers on Halloween nights of 1963 and 1978. In its current state, the Myers house is abandoned, and had been left the same way as it appeared on the night of Judith Myers' death, at the hands of Michael. Destroyed realty sign, a result of Laurie Stroh's family selling the property. Backwater Swamp is a location likely somewhere in Louisiana, and is a swamp located close by to Lisa Sherwood's or Hag's village. It's a place far away from society and doesn't seem very accessible. It houses a village of cannibals that capture Lisa after she slips into the swamp during a storm. The Grim Pantry is where the people that were captured were held by the villagers and was where Lisa was held too with the skeletal remains still visible from others. The Pale Rose is a different matter, simply being an old paddle steamer boat, said to have been stuck in the swamp's mud long before the villagers arrived. It appears to be where Lisa went after escaping the villagers and becoming the hag, used as a small base of operations, with it having signs of inhabitation and ritualistic markings within. These aren't actually visible, unfortunately. Larry's Memorial Institute is a mansion that was transformed into a CIA black site, meaning it was hidden. Herman Carter, the doctor, is recruited here by Otto Stamper, the founder of the Garden of Joy. This is the location where Doctor would have free reign to do as he pleased, developing his electroshock therapy interrogation methods. After Doctor's massacre, the site was closed, and in the old law, it was said to have been destroyed by demolition, likely as part of a cover-up of what took place there. Red Forest is likely a real-life forest that surrounded the area of Chernobyl's nuclear plant, and so is highly irradiated. This could be coincidental, though and it's possibly just a name given to the forest. Maybe they are redwood trees. They don't look like they are, but hey, maybe. The cabin within the forest belongs to Anna or the Huntress, and was once the house of her mother also. Mounted inside, we can see the elk handlers that killed her mother and a family portrait presumably of a young Anna, her father, and her mother. We can also find different toys, and an area where Anna kept the children she captured. On loops, we can find helmets, dolls, and other things from nearby villages that Anna looted, and from soldiers who would pass through too. You may question as to why the Temple of Purgation is within the Red Forest, what with Adiris not being Russian. Well, this is actually the entity's doing. Modern-day Babylon is located in Iraq, which is where the Temple of Purgation would have been located. The entity placed it into the Red Forest, likely out of convenience. It was created from Adiris' memories, with the structure becoming eroded as a result of the forest winds. The tomb within is possibly Adiris' tomb, a representative burial of her, as they never actually found the body. Springwood is where Freddy Krueger worked as a groundskeeper, living within the basement of the school in the boiler room. There's a secret passage down there, which was the location where Freddy would take and abuse the children, revealed within the 2010 film. Gideon Meat Plant is the main location of Saw, and where the very first game we see takes place. 
the aftermath of this game being visible in the bathroom. The upstairs area we can find Jigsaw's designs and his workshop, and we can also find the bed where Amanda slept, and things like where the pig masks were kept. This place was a base for Jigsaw. Throughout the map there is reference made to multiple different saw games and traps. The Yamaoka estate is the home of the Yamaokas. The family residence is important to both Rin and Kazan Yamaoka, and was the location where both of them grew up, and where Rin was killed by her father. Its decrepit state is a result of their family falling apart, and the estate also falling apart, with Rin's father unable to keep it together, quite literally. The estate's grand look is repaired with cheap materials, after Rin attends college and her mother falls sick, and her father can't afford more expensive materials. The Sanctum of Wrath is more significant to Oni, it's a shrine that was not actually situated on the estate, and was abandoned off the time. He ran into it somewhere within Japan, when he was on his journey to remove the false samurai. The statue in the center is broken as a result of Kazan's rage, possibly after he fights his father. It's been placed on the estate in order to anger the Oni, a trick of the entity. Possibly it's an Oni statue, a statue of the lord who desecrated his name, a statue of his father, it could be a variety of things. The Mount Ormond Resort is set on top of a Canadian mountainside in the town of Ormond. It was once a ski resort, remnants of this being visible still with the ski lifts and such. The main cabin was likely a hub or reception location, with the central fire and the front desks with lockers and such, where you would likely be able to retrieve skiing equipment. I have always found it odd how a resort located on a mountain is entirely flat, but hey. It's said to have been abandoned as a fancier resort was built on the nearby Mount Richards. Apparently the mountain was also mined for coal, I'm not too sure why that's important, maybe I'm missing something there, but that's mentioned in the flavour text. After it was abandoned, the Legion took it as their home base, and recruited a young Jeff to paint the mural we now see across the wall of the upper floor. Hawkins National Laboratory was a hidden underground area where Eleven and the other kids were created essentially, and had their powers refined. The big portal room was where the Upside Down first breached the right way up. The hallway strewn with bodies of scientists is a result of both Eleven and Demogorgon, also one or Vecna, I believe. Grave of Glenvale with its map, the Dead Dog Saloon, is an abandoned settlement. It became abandoned after the gang of Caleb Quinn, the Deathslinger, and a rival gang, led by outlaw Mason Kelly, clashed. The Hellshire gang, led by Caleb, had five of their men taken by the Kellys. The two gangs clashed with guns and dynamite, with both losing numbers in the process, and also civilians losing their lives in the crossfire. The bodies you see throughout the settlement are from the Hellshires, the Kellys, and likely civilians too. The five members who Caleb came for were found to be dead, and the remaining Kelly members were ended in the same way the five were. Pretty brutal, and the name Grave of Glenvale makes a lot of sense. I think this map is meant to have a lot more bodies actually, but they kind of didn't do as many because it would probably clog the map up too much. Silent Hill and the Midwich Elementary School are both important. Alessa Gillespie attended Midwich as a student, Cheryl of course being the reincarnation of Alessa. Alessa was killed as a result of her special abilities at the hands of the Order, a cult which Cheryl takes down during Silent Hill 3. Raccoon City and its police station are the location of the T-Virus zombie outbreaks. It's where both Leon and Jill worked, or Leon was going to work. It was his first day on the job when the outbreak occurred. The welcome sign in one of the rooms is because of it being Leon's first day. Jill worked upstairs in the star's office, along with Wesker and Chris. The station is left broken and abandoned after many of the officers turn from the virus, and areas are destroyed by different bioweapons. Forsaken Boneyard is a real-life location that has seemingly been adapted by the entity, and has drawn on artists' own interpretations and memories of the massacre that occurred there, where her friends died and her tongue and hands were cut from her. It is said to now be a celebration of those events. The crows live here now, observing and remembering the events that happened. I believe this is one of the realms most closely tied to the entity. The ink dripping around the trial makes me think that it's likely artists' own interpretation or memory of the area, with the crows ominously hovering, and many of the graveyard's features being exaggerated. The Withered Isle is a reclusive island where the Garden of Joy existed, a location where Otto Stamper's cult existed. 
The community named The Fold was meant to be rid of any and all negative emotions or thoughts. Darkness soon appeared within the gardens though, people went missing, and eventually the repressed feelings of the community summoned the dredge, engulfing the community and consuming them all, leaving the creepy remains we see now. The main building is the core of this, with its heavy darkness and the sounds of old inhabitants moaning in pain. The dredges and entities' influence have altered the mansion's look, and it's said to morph and contort into different formations. The decimated Borgo is what remains after the massacre of Knight and his boys. The village pictured is named Daro. I believe this is the location described at the end of the Knight's Law, where after discovering Vittorio has disappeared from the entity taking him, he goes into a rage and begins slaughtering the nearby villagers. They attack him, believing he is the embodiment of evil, and are doing the virtuous thing by removing him. It could also be the village Tahos lived in as a kid, but some other flavour text does seem to suggest it's from the later part of his lore. Devarka Deepwood and its primary location, Toba Landing, is set on the alien planet of Devaka. The central structure is a spaceship which landed with the goal of colonizing and harvesting the planet for materials. On the planet an old civilization is located. Hux becomes implanted with an alien crystal after mining these old structures, and his commands are changed, and he becomes set on destroying humanity, viewing them as inferior. The bodies strewn across Toba Landing are from Hux's attack where he slowly picked off different members of Gabriel's crew, leaving only the abandoned station. Well, that's gonna do it. I do hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you have any thoughts or additions or things I may have missed down below. Thanks, and goodbye.